Hi and welcome to Sea Airspace 2022 just outside Washington DC. In our day one video, we're focusing on weapon systems. But first, let's get an update on the Constellation class frigate program with Fincantieri. Hi Mark, good morning, nice to see you again. Great to see you again. So what's the latest with the Constellation Class Frigate program? What's the status of the program? So uh, Constellation Class Frigate program uh, is uh, it's going great. Uh, this year we're in the process of finishing the uh, both the functional and the detailed design uh, and we'll be starting construction here in 2022. Uh, the shipyard has gone through a significant program of capital improvement in order to be able to execute the Constellation class program. Uh, so the first thing that we've done and is complete is we put in a new panel line. Uh, this is an automated panel line that turns raw steel into the panels with which we construct the ship. Uh, and that had been done at Marinette Marine by a panel line with teams and teams of welders. That's now almost fully operate, uh, automated. What had been done with, uh, with teams of you know, a dozen or more people is now two operators and robots doing the welding. Uh, it's really amazing to see. Uh, it's a very similar panel line to what Fincantieri is using in several of their more advanced European yards. And uh, we benefited a lot from having uh, Fincantieri Italy um, kind of inform us as we were going along making that capital improvement. The second big thing that's now just now done is what we call the frigate erection bay. So when we build a ship, we stack the modules from bottom to top as the ship's being built. Uh, right now for the LCS and the MMSC, we have a building where we do that in the yard. Two ships side by side will fit fully built up. Uh, but the frigate being so much larger, the Constellation class frigate's a 7,000 ton ship. Uh, as comparison, an LCS is roughly 3,500 tons, so it's twice the size. So we have a new building. That building is just now completed, and we'll be able to stack two frigates next to each other in that building as we're building up the ship. And then finally, we're putting in a synchro lift. We're about halfway done with that. We've done all the blasting and all the dredging for, uh, for a synchro lift. It'll be a 10,000 ton synchro lift. Once done, it'll be the largest synchro lift in North America. Very comparable to some of the major synchro lifts you see in Barcelona, Spain, or Adelaide, Australia. Uh, really kind of state-of-the-art technology for translating a ship into and out of the water. So that synchro lift will be done about a year from now. Uh, we're going to have our critical design review with the Navy next month, uh, and then we'll begin uh, the, uh, the, the start of fabrication of the ship shortly thereafter. Uh, but the Navy likes to make sure that we're appropriately far along with our detailed design and that we've completed what's called the functional design of the ship uh, before we actually start construction. So that's happening here in, in just a little while. And uh, last but not least, Mark, a bit of... Uh Technical aspect, uh, I understand that uh, you have entered into discussion with uh, AAC for a new VDS for the frigate. So, right, so the, the ship has a requirement for a vertical depth sonar, that is, uh, and then the, uh, the Navy uh, directed us to use the AAC variable depth sonar, the VDS. Uh, we received that, uh, that direction recently and have, uh, and have placed a purchase order. We're very excited about that. Uh, we believe that uh, that, that uh, Variable depth sonar will offer the ship uh, a, uh, an outstanding ASW capability. We have the MSI Defense Systems Mark 38 Mod 4 gun, which is part of the US Navy program. We're currently involved in a prototype program with them to provide a number of systems for test and qualification along with the associated electro-optical site system. The competition was about 18 months ago so we're well into delivery to the US Navy now and looking forward to follow-on contract uh, sometime next year uh, for a fit across the DDGs initially uh, and then uh, fleet-wide. 
So are we talking uh, the early bird class uh, flight uh, one, two alphas, flight three? Uh, initially we're expecting flight two and flight three, uh, but then there's a range of other new platforms, for example the light amphibious warship uh, that we uh, hope and expect that the Mark 38 Mod 4 will also be part of. What makes this gun mount unique? Um, I think it's probably to do with the heritage we have of 30mm gun weapon systems in the naval market. We provide 30mm uh, gun weapon systems to 22 navies globally, fitted throughout the UK Royal Navy, um, and obviously moving into the US Navy market is a really big step for us. But I think in addition to the heritage, that move from 25mm to 30mm gives the gun a lot more capability. Not just for small attack craft, but importantly for the US Navy and many navies around the world, the ability to counter unmanned aerial systems at range. And the ammunition types at 30 millimeter and the range that that offers uh, provides a much greater capability. The system also has a very large ammunition loadout, so 400 rounds per mount, uh, split 200 either side, that again gives the operator the options of having different ammunition types, so for example a long range surface ammunition type on one side and uh, ammunition type suitable for counter UAS on the other. Anthony, you're also showcasing this electro-optical system, can you tell us more? Yes, this is a fundamental part of the gun weapon system, providing surveillance, uh, acquisition and targeting uh, that is fed through to the fire control system to uh, target the gun. Um, this is a, uh, an area that MSI Defence Systems is very familiar with, having been in the gun weapon system uh, for 20 to 30 years. But this is the first time we've uh, produced our own electro-optical sight system, specifically for the US Navy Mark 38 Mod 4 program, uh, but clearly uh, for all future programs, um, both from the UK and from the US, uh, we would look to incorporate it with our own, um, own electro-optical sight system. Does it have a name? <laughs> no, not at the moment. I mean, it's, uh, there's a nomenclature that the, the US Navy have provided, um, but it is part of the Mark 38 Mod 4 um, gun weapon system. Cheers, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Lockheed Martin is showcasing its expeditionary launching systems. It consists in a containerized Mark 41 launching system, VLS. Uh, the scale models show a potentially unmanned uh, surface vessel, uh, likely from uh, Project Overlord, uh, fitted with uh, six containers, including four with the VLS. There are also a number of uh, vehicles, probably for the US Marine Corps. So these would be land-based, towed by trucks. There's a video playing on the booth as well, uh, showing the expeditionary launching systems. Uh, there's a logo showing a number of missiles. So they don't want to uh, disclose too many details, but uh, we were told that uh, the system is meant to deploy standard missiles family. So uh, SM2, SM6, SM3, as well as Lurasm and of course uh, the Tomahawk land attack cruise missile. Uh, this was tested, I believe, about uh, two years ago. The artist impressions are also showing uh, the system fitted Mark VI patrol boat. Those are fairly small in size. They are also showing artist impression of uh, an EPF fitted with uh, the containerized launcher. BA system is showcasing a similar concept. This is their e-launcher, so an ISO container fitted with uh, not four like Lockheed Martin, but this time six Mark 41 vertical launch systems uh, to deploy a whole range of missiles. We are now on the Kongsberg booth with uh, Steve Schreiber, former helicopter pilot, wing commander for years in the Navy. Steve, good afternoon. Thanks for welcoming us. Thanks, Xavier. It's nice to, nice to be here. Nice to see you again. 
so you're showcasing this uh, scale model of an MH60 Romeo fitted with two uh, NSM anti-ship missiles. What can you tell us about this future capability? Well, what a great capability it brings to uh, any, any nation that's interested or operates with the MH60 Romeo. Uh, we're bringing the Naval Strike Missile to that platform. Um, we're actively pursuing that right now and it brings uh, this anti-ship overland strike, maritime strike capability uh, to any helicopter capable platform. It could be a ship, it could be a, a platform, it could be land-based, um, but you bring that longer range capability with a very high precision weapon uh, to the platform. The missile itself, uh, is it any different compared to ship or land-launched NSMs? Does it get more same range? Capability, same capabilities as the, uh, the ship-launched, land-launched. Uh, a couple airframe differences on the missile uh, so that it could be hung from the, uh, the weapon station on a helicopter. But other than that, the capabilities are the same. And uh, what kind of... Uh integration have you conducted so far? Have you conducted uh, fit checks on MH60? So we've done fit checks on the MH60 Romeo and the MH60 Sierra uh, with the U.S. Navy um, and uh, um, we've done some preliminary analysis and study uh, for the integration efforts as well.